Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are here again with our now nearly 15 year old Harbor Freight 21 gallon air compressor. Got a couple videos on this thing and one of them in particular has been pretty popular. It's been doing some upgrades on it. One of the upgrades I performed I wasn't very happy with and that is my air filter upgrade. So this Briggs & Stratton box that I kind of hacked up to put on it. I just didn't think this was working really well. It seemed to take forever to build up pressure and it would run forever and it would get really hot. So I decided I would try something different for this. However, a couple days ago, I kicked this thing on to, I don't know, do air compressory things. And I noticed that it had a very distinct tonal change after the first couple minutes of running. And I've noticed this lately, but this was very distinct and it sounded very bad. So I came out here and unplugged the thing, started messing with it, plugged it back in. And I realized that on the compression stroke, it was blowing air back out of the cylinder head out of the intake. And it's like, oh, well, this thing must have a broken reed valve or something like that. Because then those heads are just pretty much pieces of spring metal that just do this and act as a valve. So when the piston goes down, the valve opens. When it comes up, it closes. And then I poked my head around the corner to look at the pressure gauge, which is right back there. And after I repaired that switch that failed about a year or so ago, and I'll link all these videos down in the description for you, and I'm sure there'll be cards popping up the whole time too. But after I changed that thing out, once I got my pressure gauge tight so it wouldn't leak air, it wasn't pointing in an upright orientation anymore, and I didn't really worry about it. So zero is, you know, something like that now or whatever. Well, I had sort of forgotten I did that. And I glanced over and looked at the gauge when all this was going on. I thought everything was fine. But in reality, I think it was saying like 160 PSI, which is bad. This thing's only supposed to be good for about 125. And the emergency blow-off valve on the tank never popped, which is also bad if that's truly what's going on. So that is the reason that we've got this really bad camera angle right now where you can't see anything that I'm actually talking about. So I don't want to actually touch it until I verify what's going on. Because if that pressure switch I replaced is stuck, so it's in the always on position that won't fire off, I don't want to bounce this thing around and make it undo itself. So I want to know if we have a repeatable condition here or not. Plus, I'm going to add some additional safety features to this thing because that valve on it didn't blow off. I'm going to put valves on it that I know are going to blow off. So the first step of this process goes as they often do. Was well, for me to get on Amazon and buy a whole bunch of stuff. What you're looking at here is two fully adjustable pressure safety override valves. And the way these adjust is they've got a little thumb screw in the top that you can adjust and you can also change out these main springs. So basically by varying the spring tension on this thing, you can control what pressure it pops off at. And like I said, I have two of those. One of them is gonna go on the tank with the factory one with this T. And this other one right here is going to go on my hose reel because whenever the compressor's on, the hose reel is in operation. I've got air plumb to it full time for the most part. So I'm gonna put another one there as well as a pressure gauge I can actually read. And I'm gonna do that on this T so there'll be a blow off the T, a pressure gauge, and then it'll just feed through to the air reel. But the first thing I'm gonna do is verify that our pressure gauge isn't lying to me. And to do that, I've got this just completely swanky glycol filled stainless steel gauge. 100% not necessary, but cheap stuff isn't cool and cool stuff isn't cheap. So if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. And this one's good up to 200 PSI, as is all this stuff. So in the future, when I upgrade air compressors, all this will live along with me and still continue to be upgraded safety and information equipment. But the first thing I'm gonna do is just put that air fitting on that gauge, I think, yep. Plug it in and see if this gauge and the one on the tank agree with each other. So I've done that and the pressure on my brand new gauge here is like, I don't know, 28, 30 PSI. And that doesn't quite look like what's going on at the tank. The tank is saying more like 80 PSI and I don't believe that to be true. It isn't behaving like it has 80 pounds of air pressure. It is behaving much more like it has 25 or so. And my basis for saying that really is anything too elaborate. Just when I unplug that and I go to plug it back in, it just doesn't feel like more than 25-ish pounds. So I am gonna run the compressor and keep an eye on this gauge because I believe my other one to be broken. And I'm gonna see how the compressor behaves and see if it's just continuing to bypass air out of the intake after a certain pressure. And that certain pressure is pretty much as soon as I plugged it in, I can feel pulsing out of the hole in the side of the head where the air filter goes. I don't particularly know if that's normal, but we'll keep an eye on the pressure and see if it's able to build up to 125 or not, because it's looking like my gauge on the tank was lying to me, but I think this brand new gauge is probably gonna be good. So after letting it run for over five minutes, it's only getting up to 75 pounds on this gauge. It's starting to smell like burning oil in here because the thing's getting so hot. 
I held that towel up over the, the intake so you could see it blowing air back out of the intake. So I think the real answer here is that compressor is dead. After this many years, I don't blame it. And I'm kind of debating whether I should even worry about it. I know it's in rough health altogether, but I was shopping at some replacements and they ain't cheap because I would really like to not grab another Harbor Freight $150 compressor. I would really like to improve my capabilities and get something better. But let's go ahead and press forward with these upgrades because why not? I bought all the stuff. I know it's here. I'm not going to worry about putting the blow off on the tank because I'll just be taking it right back off whenever I scrap the other compressor there. But I will put one over here on the hose reel along with this gauge just so we don't have these kind of questions in the future or not as many. And it'll be in my long-term plan to have multiple air gauges in my air system so that if something like this happens again, I'll, I'll know what's up more immediately. So these guys are going to be out of the equation for now because we don't care. These guys will put together. I'm not going to be able to set this air valve or this pop-off because I don't have enough air pressure to test it. My long-term plan was to take this somewhere else that has like 200 PSI of shop air and adjust it there down to like 130, 135, you know, a little bit more than my compressor would actually make. But that's not in the cards today. So what I'm going to do is just leave it however it came and we'll hang on to these other springs. There are no instructions that tell me which spring is heavier, lighter, whatever. So I think it's just kind of a, a feel on them kind of thing. I don't think you stack them up or anything. I think you just do one at a time. But there's not really going to be any magic here. Just going to end up putting that guy on one end, putting that guy on the other end. And then my hose reel is already on quick disconnects. So there'll be air fittings on each side of this thing. And this thing's kind of sharp. I think I'm going to take to that with a file. Uh, for what it's worth, all this stuff will be linked in the description. These are this guy and this guy are both Anderson Metals Made in USA solid bar stock billet brass. They're, they're nice fittings, but they are a little sharp. So now I've got a pressure gauge here. My overpressure blow off safety is here. There's still one on the tank and eventually there will be two. And this is on a quick disconnect. And this hose is also on a quick disconnect. So when the time comes, I can just unhook this from the reel, unhook this from the compressor, take this whole thing somewhere else and adjust my pressure to get this to pop where I want it to. And of course, almost as importantly, I now have a pressure gauge that works and that I can readily see. Uh, every time I walk out of the house, the, the main door to the house from the garage is right there. So every time I walk out, this pressure gauge will just be looking right at me. I try not to leave the compressor plugged in or anything anyway, exactly because of what has just happened to it. As if I'd left it plugged in and it, whatever failed, failed, and it just ran forever. It could have started a house fire. But it's still nice to be able to monitor the condition of your air system, see if you have a big leak or something like that, if this bleeds down overnight or whatever. It's the end of an era. The old Harbor Freight, I'm pretty sure, is dead. But we have a nice upgrade here for the future. And maybe it's something you want to do. Again, links will be down in the description. So as always, guys, I want to thank you for stopping in for this video. We'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.